Hello and welcome to my GTK Radiant 1.5 uh, tutorial specifically for Urban Terra. Um, I'm basically going to be going over everything within GTK Radiant or as much as I know. Um, showing you everything through all these buttons and whatever I can out of um, menus, um, hotkeys and how to build basic, basic um, brushes. Um, as in all the entities and such from in here. When I go over the entities I'll give you a download link to include um, some extra stuff um, as well as uh, shader, common shaders and shader lists um, just in case you don't have those. Um, I will not be showing you how to install Radiant um, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials out there how to do that um, so basically first stop and um, I'm going to be going over this uh, um, the menus first to uh, give you an idea of where everything is and what you can actually do. Uh, this will be split over probably a few uh, videos just because of the time it will take. So let's get straight into it. Um, first off, this is my map just so you can quickly see uh, what I've got I haven't got a lot left to do on it um, this is my death run shadow map which I will be releasing not long from here as you can see it's quite nearly done um, and it's uh, I'm very happy with it so yeah um, so I'm gonna do open up a new map just to keep it clean and let me just check oh, we got, okay we've got two minutes so far uh, good. So obviously in the file, uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory stuff, you know, basically in any application you have all these kind of things, um, new map, open map, import a map file into your current map, uh, save, save as, save selected, so all the brushes you have selected at one time, you can save them, um, save a whole region, I'm not exactly sure what the point of that is, but uh, maybe you can do something, I don't know. Uh, refresh all the models, I guess just refreshing everything in it. Uh, project settings. Now for Urban Terra specifically, you want this on custom Quake 3 modification and the FS underscore game at Q3 UT4. Uh, you got the last four maps that you've had open. Um, Radiant Exit, all the basic stuff. Then you got Undo, Copy, Paste, Duplicate, which is your spacebar. Okay. So if you get a brush, okay, like so, you want to duplicate it, just be space, and what do you know, you got another one, and another one. It's just really good, easy to uh, do. Now whatever I'm doing in here at the moment, I'll show you later on in a later tutorial. Um, delete, it's obvious one, parent, I'm not exactly sure what that does. Never ever used it, probably never will. Uh, clear selection, okay, just pressing your escape thing, um, just deselects anything you have selected, invert a selection, so say you've got a group of brushes selected, if you press I then it'll select every other brush and deselect the ones you had selected. Um, select inside, okay, um, say you've got like a big sky box and you've got brushes all on the inside of it, it will deselect or I don't know, I'm sure it might actually remove them, remove it, um, but it'll select everything on the inside select all the touching brushes, all the brushes that are touching your one you got currently selected expand selection um, this one here, control alt e is very useful if you've got like a complicated um, complicated kind of um, structure that you've built and you want to select them all at one time to maybe change the texture or um, change something in the group. It's you want to use a funk group, okay? That's for um, well, basically everything. Every brush that you make is put into the world spawn group. Okay, as you can see there, it's a world spawn group, and that's the default group it goes into. But you can select multiple brushes and put them into a funk group. Okay, and that'll put all those brushes in one group together. And therefore, if you select one of the brushes, and just put them all into a funk group, 
Therefore, if you select one of the brushes and control alt e it'll select all the brushes in that group. Okay? You can pretty much have as many groups as you want. Again, it's, good, it's ideal for complicated uh, structures where you've got lots of different brushes in them. Um, so that's just really useful for that. Um, you can also do it for world spawn entities, uh, for world spawn stuff. Select one, it'll select all the world spawns. Um, so that's just really, really useful. As I can show you in. Uh, a map I'm making here show you here see this ferris wheel I've got that I've made if I select it's all part of a funk group so if I select that one brush and you see that's what I mean you don't want to go along and have to select every single little brush so that's why you add it all to a funk group and the beauty of it is you can do select another brush that's part of another group whoops I don't want and control alt e as well and it'll select all of that one as well so it's really useful for that kind of stuff um, uh, and then we've got the preferences uh, so I'll do the preferences and then I'll go into another tutorial split it over um, so enable logging yeah well that's pretty obvious if you build um, if you use the build, it'll log it into there. Anything you do, changing brushes, deleting brushes, um, whatever you do, it'll get logged into the log. And you can view the log, uh, which I'll show you later on, but I'll do it now. You see pressing O, and that shows you everything that you do. Okay, so do that, do that, and now delete. Should show up that I've done that. See? So it's just good log. Uh, game, okay. You want it on that? That's the that's your only choice, really, anyway. Show global preferences. That's on when you open up GTK Radiant. That um, the preferences of this pretty much show up, and it also includes um, that as well uh, in the startup screen. Okay. Uh, if you've got multiple monitors showing the primary one and uh default text editor well I'm not exactly sure what that really does anyway but I just leave that checked. Uh layout I strongly recommend this layout okay because pretty much all the other ones are just too complicated. This one's really easy okay you've got the 3D window you have the top view side view and side view it shows you which one you got if you have it on the other views, you've got to go through like shift tab to select through. And if you're a Steam user, you know, the application or whatever, um, you know, the store, Steam, um, quite often they use the shift tab to open up the Steam store. So if you've got something open, you go shift tab and it'll open up Steam again and then you end up with a lot of problem, you know, just annoyance. So it's really easy to use this, okay, no switching through screens, it's just all on one really easy you can change the sizes if you want okay it's it's just so much easier okay and by the way if you right click in the 3d view you get to move about change your view about if you hold right click in any of the 2d views uh, you can move it around okay left click and drag creates a brush okay if you uh, scroll, goes in and out. If you right click in there and you scroll, okay, you can use that. You use the arrow keys to move about. Use the arrow keys, as you can see. I'm using the arrow keys in the mouse. Okay, just a note. If you have caps lock on and you go into the 3D view trying to use arrow keys, they, it will just deselect and it will not work. Okay, so if you encounter that, it's just turn the caps lock off, and it's that easy. Um, and then, well, I'm not sure if I want to show you now, but 
basically, no, I'll show you later. Uh, we're gonna get to that. Scenes, wrong one. Okay, then you got your mouse, choose how you want the mouse to be. Just, there's nothing in there. Textures. Okay, well, this is basically for your speed of computer uh, to render out the textures, okay? If you want to, um, you know, how uh, much rendered do you want, any compression at all, what the quality is. Uh, I've never ever tried gamma or anything. Um, patches, how many uh, divisions in the patch you make automatically come on it. Um, entities, when you create a light, do you want to show the radius around the light? It kind of creates a red uh, sphere around it, showing you the distance the light will travel. Um, load the last map on open, so that's pretty obvious. Uh, when you close Radiant, do you want it to open up with the last map that you had when you closed it, or do you want it to open up with a new map like this? Yeah. Uh, undo, how many undos do you want to be able to do? <laughs> um, it's really useful, you can create it higher than that if you want, it's just another kind of um, engine ability sort of thing. Uh, default texture scale, okay, so as one, uh, it'll use the default texture size if you use axial, uh, which is, um, well, which is putting the brush at its natural size. Uh, if you go 0 0.5, it'll halve the texture size when you use axial, and you know so on. You can change it in the text uh, in the scale settings, but uh, I'll get to that a little later on. Um, yeah, just uh, what you want it as default. Uh, not exactly sure what either of those two really do. Grid default grid spacing is eight. Um, so on your keyboard, using one to nine. Okay, you can change the default grid level, okay? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay? 9 is extremely massive. Um, you don't want to use anything lower than 1 because you got here, you got those three. You don't want to use those though, okay? Because you can create leaks and, you know, just problems. Okay, so use one as your lowest. It's best to start off with four, maybe even higher, and then work your way down as you get more detail into the map. But yeah, four is your default. Okay, it's just that. Okay, if you go down to one, then you can make it even smaller. Okay, so that's one. That's eight. Okay, so then get yourself confused on that. Preferences. Okay, this is the path to your mapping folder. Okay, I strongly recommend, anyone strongly recommends that you create a separate folder for your maps. Okay, when you're mapping, you want one. Because if you have the folder, like, you go here, you see I've got Urban Terra, that's 4.1, well, 4.1.1, 4.2, 4.1.1 for my mapping. And you see in here, we go in here, see I've got all the maps I have okay, that I've downloaded through the game and in my mapping folder, well I, I, I've got a couple, okay, well actually that's the only one, that's because it's such a big file I wanted to see how it was done and such, but um, uh, I've got a few that I've texted out, but I but it's basically because if you have all those maps I showed you uh, downloaded through the game in here, they will show up in your texture browser, um, in your shaders and such, and it will just cause problems. You will end up using, well quite likely you will end up using um, textures from another map and then when you compile it and put it in the PK3 file and you send it off, people that don't have that map that you got the texture from we end up with missing textures, so you don't want that, which is why you want a clean, um, clean mapping folder. Okay, so that's just the path to it. Okay, uh, servants inspector. Not sure what that does. Um, I'm give it a talk about the mouse. That's entirely. If you've got a slow computer, you probably want to enable that. It just basically makes a 
block on the view on how far you can view uh, inside Radiance. So if you've got an exceptionally large map, um, you block it off so you can't see the whole part. You can only see a little part where your little um, where your little man is about. Uh, solid selection boxes say you've got a uh, odd shape um, brush. Uh, you just put a solid selection box on it, and it'll just show a nice square box around it, just um, showing you where it exactly is. Um, size info. Um, that's well. If you create a brush, it'll um, give you sizes and such of it on the side of it, um, and these things here. Uh, update views on camera move. Yes. Okay, so that means if you create uh, entities and such as soon as you move the camera it'll update to it um, instead of doing it straight away uh, I've never actually noticed that one until now um, but you know some of these things you can get clip it all uses Colk um, Colk which is that one there is uh, in the common folder it is the brush that you want to have uh, pretty much on every side that the player cannot see okay what is ideal is to make the brush um, entirely caulk and then texture the sides you want the players to be able to see um, because it's an invisible uh, brush that does not get drawn by the engine saving DSP file size, frames per second and overall performance um, so you just want to ensure I guess so by doing this I'm ensuring that um, it's not gonna. I'm not gonna have any leftover textures by the time I get to the end of the map. Uh, build. Uh, do you want process monitoring while it's building? Yes, uh, most people do. So you can watch it. Uh, if it detects a leak, say into the void and such, um, the void is just this open area here. Okay, you need to have your map entirely closed off. I'll show you that a little later on. Uh, run the engine after compile. That does not seem to work for me. So. I'm not even going to bother. Uh, texture browser, basic uh, load shaders. Do you want the common shaders to load up when you first start up? Um, I don't know. Should put those uh, Auto save. This is a crucial part. You want to make sure you enable it. Uh, I have it for every five minutes. Um, save snapshot. Do you want to take it to picture of the screen when it auto saves? Okay, you can have it less, you can have it save every one minute, uh, but it does interrupt your work when it, like that, when it auto saves, um, because it'll deselect whatever you've got, or whatever you're doing at the time, it'll just stop, and it'll kind of freeze it off, and then you end up with a problem, but anyway, that's all of that stuff, I better split this off now into a new part, and when we get back, I will show you the rest of the toolbar.